friends and welcome to the bright side your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation i'm your host pharmacist ben nutritional pharmacist from boulder colorado registered pharmacist number one two two seven five i specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and deadly medical procedures if you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, acne, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds. Recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is always a healing system, regenerating system. It is always designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. As long as it has the raw materials it needs to do its work, the body can do the rest. And it may seem like a miracle to some folks, but it really is no miracle at all. It is simply the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we welcome your phone calls on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. Try to call in early so we can get to as many calls as possible. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, skin care, ingredients, something you may have heard about or read about in the newspaper or seen on TV, or if you just have a success story you'd like to share, or if you want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number today and every day on the Bright Side. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products you hear advertised on the program, you can head over to my website, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can order products directly from the website, or you can sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team right off the website, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. Or you can call the phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. If you're interested in checking out my new Truth Treatment products, you can head over to truthtreatments.com. Or you can check out my Facebook page, The Truth with Ben. We've got skincare posts up uh, every couple of days. We do a skincare post at The Truth with Ben Facebook page. And if you want to purchase any of the Truth Treatments, Truth Treatment products or just find out about them, go to truthtreatments.com. And we are talking skincare here on the bright side. We've been talking skincare now for the last few weeks. We'll do it for a little bit longer. Last we spoke, we were talking about dry skin. Human skin is never supposed to be dry, yet that is probably, dry skin is probably the single most common skincare issue. I don't know anybody that doesn't have dry skin. When I do my presentations, my skincare presentations, I always do a little survey of the audience, see how many folks have dry skin, and invariably, everybody raises their hand. Nothing exemplifies or demonstrates how nutritionally deficient we are, what's wrong with our health, more clearly than the fact that almost everybody has a skin condition that shouldn't occur. Dry skin is not a moisturizer issue. It is a health issue. It is a skin issue. It's an organ issue. And you can do stuff topically to help with your dry skin, but it doesn't involve a moisturizing cream, that's for sure. It involves topical nutrition. If you're gonna do something topically to your skin, and you really want to do something effective, use topical nutrients, minimize, reduce, even eliminate the waxes and the oils and the preservatives and the perfumes and the emulsifiers and the surfactants that do nothing for your skin and are only in a product so that somebody can sell it to you. When it comes to topical, uh, topical skin care for dry skin, or it's technically known as xerosis, X-E-R-O-S-I-S. -E Last program, we were talking about the second half of our dynamic duo of skincare ingredients, and that's vitamin C, which along with vitamin A, or uh, the retinoids as they're called, 
forms what I call the dynamic duo of skincare ingredients. If you're stranded on a desert island, you can only bring two ingredients, or if you have an anti-aging skincare pro program that you're, a topical skincare program that you're using, it better be featuring vitamin A and vitamin C, or you are truly missing the boat on skincare and anti-aging ingredients. There's so many important roles for vitamin C when it comes to the health of the skin, and really the health of the whole body. It's hard to know where to begin. However, for all the jobs that vitamin C performs in the body, whether we're talking detoxification, whether we're talking sun protection, whether we're talking chelation or protection from heavy metals, whether we're talking stimulating the growth of bone and stimulating the growth of collagen and anti-aging and healing, all of these roles can be summed up in one word, and that is thrival, thriving. Vitamin C is a thriving molecule. Vitamin C is a vitamin of the good times. Vitamin C is all largely found in fruits and in produce and somewhat in wild game. So vitamin C's availability throughout history has depended on good times, on summertime, on the sun, on lots of plants and lots of vegetables, on livingness and life. Vitamin C is most abundant in the summertime. It's most abundant when the sun is hottest. It's most abundant when game and produce are plentiful. Vitamin C is a summertime molecule. And understandably, vitamin C is protective against solar radiation that is at its peak in the summer months. Vitamin C is a UV solar protection vitamin. Using vitamin C or having vitamin C in the diet is how our skin is supposed to be protected. This is really important. Our skin is supposed to be protected from the environment, from solar radiation, from ultraviolet radiation from the sun, by what we eat, not by what we slather on. And I'm telling you guys, there's very little skincare ingredients. There's very little in the world of skincare that is more toxic, more poisonous than a sunscreen. And there's lots of things that are in your skincare products that are poisonous, including and especially preservatives, perfumes, etc., surfactants, emulsifiers. These are all toxic materials. If you ate a preservative, you'd be pretty darn sick. You might even die. If you ate a perfume, you probably would get very sick. You'd have to have your stomach pumped. Why would you want to put that on your skin? Likewise, sunscreen. If your dermatologist is telling you to slather a sunscreen, he needs to go to biochemist, back to biochemistry 101 and study what a sunscreen is. It is a toxic chemical skull and crossbones. And yes, I know you're putting it on your skin and you're not eating it. And yes, I know it's not the same as eating it when you rub it on your skin. You're not going to have the same toxicity. But nonetheless, do you really want to smear a poison toxic substance on your skin? To deactivate the sun and if you absolutely have to put a sunscreen on get it off your skin when you don't need it and don't put it on if you don't need it there's these eye creams and moisturizing creams and facial creams and wrinkle creams and anti-aging creams that have sunscreens built into them compelling you forcing you to rub that stuff on your skin every time you want a moisturizer I'm telling you guys, there's very little that you could put on your skin in terms of topical skincare that is more toxic than a sunscreen. Now, if you really want sun protection, you'd be way better off using internal nutrition, especially vitamin C. And by the way, using vitamin C topically has wonderful sun protection benefits. It's not like a sunscreen. It doesn't have the same kind of power as a sunscreen. And we'll talk a little bit about sunscreens here coming up next week and how they work and what SPFs really are. But for now, just understand that vitamin C offers tremendous protection from the sun in a non-toxic fashion. The way the divine force intended our skin to be protected by eating vitamin C and then also, these days anyway, by putting topical uh, vitamin C on topically as well. Vitamin C offers protection from all kinds of topical assaults. Vitamin C offers protection from uh, uh, from pollution in the air, from heavy metals. Vitamin C offers protection from cigarette smoke. In fact, every time you smoke a cigarette, you'd be pretty smart to be using vitamin C internally, gargling with vitamin C. Vitamin C offers protection from chlorine. We talked about how when you wash your face with tap water, you expose it to one of the most pro-aging substances on the planet, one of the most toxic carcinogenic substances on the planet, and that's chlorine using topical vitamin C after you wash your face can help deactivate and help protect you from some of the toxicity associated with chlorine and water. And after you swim, 
actually take a chlorine bath, which is really what's happening when you jump in your, your typical swimming pool. You'd be really smart to put topical vitamin C on your skin and to take a little bit of supplemental vitamin C as well. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. Got more to say about vitamin C and topical skin care. We'll take your phone calls as well. 844-236-6010 is our number. back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on the archive page at brightsideben.com. You'll find a shopping cart up with all the longevity products at brightsideben.com. You can also check out my blogs, pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com, and you can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the website's brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. And, of course, you're always welcome to call the phone team at 866-735-2470. Our number today, 844-236-6010. We'll get your calls here in our next segment, talking some vitamin C and vitamin A. Vitamin C, stupendously important, along with vitamin A, one of the dynamic duo of skin care ingredients, vitamin A. Uh, vitamin A absorbs into the skin very effectively. Vitamin C, not as much, although uh, topically you can get some vitamin C into the skin, but you want to make sure it's fat-soluble vitamin C. Fat-soluble vitamin C will indeed make it through the surface of the skin. It will indeed even make it into the dermis of the skin, the lower levels of the skin. Of course, that's where your collagen is, and that's where all the, the fibers are that keep your skin from wrinkling. And you can also get sun protection benefits using topical vitamin C and sun protection benefits that range not just to the surface of the skin, but also to the lower levels of the skin. Not that vitamin C is a sunscreen. It is not a sunscreen. It does not absorb light. Sunscreens work by absorbing photons or pieces of light from the sun and then deactivating them. Vitamin C is an antioxidant. It deactivates the free radicals, the damage, uh, damage cells that are produced by the sun. It also has anti-inflammatory benefits. So it doesn't screen the sun as much as it helps heal the skin from sun damage. And it also has anti-inflammatory benefits. If you're using your typical skin care products from a drugstore, department store, even a salon or off the internet, you're probably going to be using a vitamin C product that is water soluble. Now water soluble material does not make it through the skin surface very effectively. So you want to look for fat soluble vitamin C. With vitamin A, you don't have that problem because all vitamin A is fat soluble. Remember that key distinction. We're always talking about water soluble versus fat soluble. Things that dissolve in water, hydrophilic, they say, and things that dissolve in fat, lipophilic, they say, hydrophilic versus lipophilic, water soluble versus fat soluble. If you're going to get something to really work on the skin, to get into the lower levels of the skin, it has to have a certain degree of lipophilicity or fat solubility. With vitamin A, that's not a problem, but with vitamin C, which is typically not fat soluble, typically water soluble, you're going to have a little bit of an issue. That's why you want to look for fat soluble vitamin C. Where do you find it? Well, go over to truthtreatments.com and you'll find four products that I formulated uh, to feature fat-soluble vitamin C, and some of them in very high concentrations. Truth Serum, for example, is nearly 80% fat-soluble vitamin C. You try to find that anywhere at a department store or at a drugstore. Nearly 80% fat-soluble vitamin C. If you're using typical skincare products, whether you buy them in a salon or internet or department store or doctor's office, you're probably not only going to be getting water-soluble vitamin C, but you're going to be exposing your skin to toxicity in the form of emulsifiers and perfumes and, and preservatives. If you really want to use those kinds of products, and I certainly don't recommend that you do, you might want to consider giving yourself a dose of topical vitamin C in its fatty form after you put on your emulsifier and perfume and preservative and uh, all the other toxic ingredients that are in your standard skincare products, put on some True Serum. Afterwards, at least you'll protect your skin from some of the toxicity. Like vitamin A, vitamin C is a growth molecule. It's a thrival molecule. It's a molecule of the good times. It's critically important for wound healing. And remember, aging is kind of a type of slow wounding, slow, sustained, chronic, under the radar wounding. So if something's going to be healing for the skin, if something's going to protect you from wounds or help heal wounds, heal burns, it's going to be perfect for anti-aging. 
This is one of the things I discovered when I was working for Blistex many, many years ago, is that if something heals the skin, if something nutritionally heals the skin, if something is food for the skin or nutrients for the skin, it's also going to have wonderful anti-aging benefits. If a nutrient like vitamin C and vitamin A and vitamin E, for that matter, are involved in wound healing, they're also going to have anti-aging properties. When the skin is wounded, the body will direct vitamin C to the damaged skin. It will shunt vitamin C to the damaged skin, assuming there is vitamin C present in the diet or via supplementation. If you don't have vitamin C in the diet, if you're not supplementing with vitamin C, that's not going to happen, but you can bypass these deficiencies by using vitamin C right on top of the skin. If you wound yourself, burn yourself, cut yourself, if you're post-surgery or even if you're pre-surgery, it would be really smart to put fat-soluble vitamin C right on the wound, right on the cut right on the area that's going to be cut if you're if you're about to have surgery you maybe want to wait and you have a burn or something you may maybe want to wait until there's a little bit of tissue on top of the burn before you put the vitamin c on the skin but the sooner you do the sooner you get your vitamin c on top of the skin whether it's in the form of my omega-6 healing cream or truth serum or, or truth bomb check out truthtreatments.com www.truthtreatments.com the sooner you put that fat soluble vitamin c on your skin the faster you're going to you're going to access the body's built-in healing response. If you use bioflavonoids in addition to your vitamin C or you're eating your bioflavonoids in addition to your vitamin C, you're going to get even more benefits because bioflavonoids, or some people will just call them flavonoids, make vitamin C more available. And that includes bergamot. We've been talking about bergamot a lot, or we talked about bergamot uh, last week with Dr. Jim Ehrlich. And if you're interested in uh, purchasing my Bergamax product, head over to Brightside Health Products. Dot com bergamot flavonoids bergamot is loaded with really cool flavonoids very unique flavonoids actually and uh, like all flavonoids bergamot flavonoids can make vitamin c more available if you're interested in wound healing or you have a burn or your post-surgery or pre-surgery it might not be a bad idea to use my bergamax you can get over to bright side health products with vitamin c with topical vitamin c with internal vitamin c to enhance the availability of the vitamin c and it's also why using topical vitamin C has benefits for healing of the skin because topical vitamin C is going to be anti-aging, topical vitamin C is going to be healing, and topical vitamin C is also going to be helpful for thinning and wrinkles and fine lines. And that's true about all fatty vitamin C. Like vitamin A, vitamin C improves secretions. We said vitamin A is a secretory vitamin, improves secretions for tears, improves secretions in the respiratory tract, and improves skin secretions, and that makes vitamin A a moisturizing vitamin. Well, guess what? Vitamin C does the same thing. Vitamin C is also a secretion-enhancing vitamin. Vitamin C is found mostly in plants and fruits, as we say. Under circumstances of, of, of nutritional deficiency, of vitamin C deficiency, muscle, bone, structural components, and can, including skin structural components, will not grow as effectively. Vitamin C in the blood tells the growing system that it's okay to expend precious resource on building tissue. When the, when, uh, the brain spots vitamin C in the blood, it perceives the presence of vitamin C as, a, as an okay, that it's all right to expend pre precious resources on making coffee collagen, making bone, making muscle, protecting the skin. Vitamin C is, in addition to being a secretory vitamin and a healing vitamin, is a protection vitamin. So vitamin C in the blood tells the body that's okay to utilize and expend nutrients for building and for healing and for recovery. The body needs to feel safe and secure if it's going to be wound healing. The body needs to feel safe and secure if it is going to be building. And vitamin C represents safety and vitamin C represents security. Using a vitamin C supplement and using vitamin C topically tells the body that all is right in the world. Hi, right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back after this with your phone calls. Don't go away. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Farm Suspend. On our next program, we'll continue talking about vitamin C. We'll talk about vitamin C for hyperpigmentation and what's called post-inflammatory pigmentation or post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. Sometimes after you have a wound or after you break out with a pimple or if you pop a zit, you'll end up with hyperpigmentation, dark spots. Well, using topical, using vitamin C topically, applying it right to the wound can help reduce the... Uh, 
the severity and the incidence of post-inflammatory after you have an inflammatory after post-inflammatory after inflammation hyperpigmentation dark spots uh, certainly a lot more effective or at least a lot less toxic than uh, the drug strategies the uh, hydroquinone strategies that you get from the dermatologist by the way vitamin a retinoic acid is also anti-hyperpigmentation thus the importance of using a and c together for dark spots melasma post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation we'll talk about all that on our next bright side episode as we continue discussing skin health vitamin c and uh, topical strategies topical nutritional strategies for having beautiful healthy pretty attractive skin all right 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side nancy in tennessee what's going on uh, good morning. Um, good morning. I've heard you talking about uh, NAC, NAC, and okay. also DMAE okay. for for like liver health and any kind of like spots on the skin. Yeah. Um, can you take those at the same time, or did DMAE I... and what was the other one you said? Uh, in acetylcysteine, NAC. Yeah, N-A-C. absolutely, absolutely, okay. you can. DMAE. I was talking about DMA, dimethyl amino ethanol. Uh, DMAE as it regards lipofusion. Now, lipofusion is a fancy way of uh, of describing the dark spots that appear deeper in the skin. You know, you have two kinds of dark spots on the skin. You have the surface pigmentation. That's uh, technically called melasma, and that's a surface pigmentation that will slough off over time, or you can encourage the sloughing off of, or you can help prevent or protect against using vitamin C and using uh, using a retinol or vitamin A. But the kind of pigmentation you're talking about, that's deeper. And that really is not so much pigment as much as it is cell debris that is accumulating as we get older and we don't clear out our cell debris as effectively. It's called lipo. Fusion, L-I-P-O-F-U-S-I-N, and the DMAE that you're mentioning, uh, that's involved in helping drain away that pigment, those uh, that cell debris or cell soot, some people call it. Uh, DMAE helps drain away, helps improve lymphatic drainage of um, of the cell debris or cell soot. Lipofusion. You can tell the difference between lipofusion and melanin or pigment by number one, the depth of the pigment. If it's deeper, that's probably lipofusion. Also, the disorganized nature of lipofusion. Lipofusion tends to look almost like geographical, like a, like the map of France or something, whereas melasma tends to be more circular and more structured or more organized. Also, lipofusion tends to be a little bit lighter than melasma, almost brownish as opposed to black or dark dark brown, more lighter brown color. Does that help you, Nancy? And also iodine. Um, a yes. friend of mine was searching your web, your site, and thought she saw something on there, or at least a link about making your own iodine. Uh, Lugol, iodine solu- solution. Lugol solution, making your yeah. own Lugol solution. Yeah, you could right. you could do that, but Lugol solution is pretty readily available. The best way to get your iodine is with iodorol, uh, and that is a uh, that is a Lugol's like solution, uh, oral oral tablet or oral capsule, and that's the easiest way to do it. Lugol solution tastes really really awful. And most people will stay away from it. Uh, with the iodorol, you get the iodine, the Lugol's iodine, without having to deal with the taste. That's the way I recommend most, most folks get their iodine. Uh, in a supplemental fashion, you can also find a generic iodorol. If you go on the Internet, look up generic iodorol. Okay. And then okay. one more quick question. Sure. Uh, for leaky gut, is um, whey protein or whey powder okay with leaky gut? Uh, I could go either way. You're going to have to see how you do. Whey protein is a building protein, so it can actually help build the gut. Whey protein also has uh, uh, factors in it that help support good bacteria in the intestine, so that can have some beneficial effects for you. On the other hand, some people will have a problem with whey protein, especially if they have a history of digestive issues or food intolerances. They may not be able to handle the whey proteins. So you're going to have to see how you do. Uh, you can always go with the more specialty whey proteins, although I don't really recommend those because they're super heavily processed, but uh, if you, you, it's basically going to be the kind of thing where you have to experiment and see how you do. Right. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Good deal. Have a beautiful day. Thanks for calling, Nancy. Okay. okay. Let's uh, go to Arizona. Welcome, Guy, to the Bright Side. What's going on, Guy? How are you, Ben? Hey, good morning. How can we help you? Good morning. I just want to say thank you. Thank you for having the courage to stand up and tell the truth. Oh, I appreciate truly, that. I'm truly grateful to you, and I recommend your show to everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, Guy. That's, that is very meaningful to me. I appreciate that. How can we help you? 
I have a few issues. I'm pre-diabetic. Okay. okay. My biggest issue is my insulin level is 30. I'm sorry, say that again. Your biggest issue, and I didn't my hear that. Insulin, my insulin level is 30. Okay. All right. So yeah, you're starting to pump out. You're starting to get a lot of insulin. You want some help with that? Is that what you're calling? That's that's okay. it. I also have okay. sleep apnea and very low testosterone. They're all connected. They're all related. So once we take care of the blood sugar and the insulin, the sleep apnea should improve and your testosterone should improve as well. Okay. So first things first, for uh, the elevated insulin, this is what happens for the listeners. Sounds like you know what's going on, guy. But for the listeners, as we get older and our body starts to get kind of used to sugar, our insulin levels creep up in order to handle that excess of sugar. So over the course of time, insulin will creep up. Insulin levels will creep up. The problem is, that while that's a good thing in the sense that the elevated insulin will help you handle sugar, the problem is insulin's got a lot of negative effects. Number one, it will stimulate, as we said yesterday, it will stimulate the growth of cysts and, and fibroids, etc. So uh, you can run into problems that way with elevated insulin. Secondly, Elevated insulin will increase the growth of cells inside blood vessels and cause, cause blood pressure to go up. And then thirdly, elevated insulin will have a negative effect on your testosterone. And then also, fourthly, elevated insulin will cause you to gain weight. So simply by dropping your insulin, you're going to improve your testosterone. You're going to improve your blood pressure. You'll improve your, improve your blood fats. And also, uh, you'll uh, also lose weight to boot. So a lot of benefits just by uh, lowering your insulin. How do you do that? The first thing you do is you restrict your intake of fat fast burning sugars and along with that guy you can restrict your intake of calories in general fasting and caloric restriction and then also lowering your intake of breads and pastas fruit juices and all the insulin spiking foods that's step number one always step number one caloric restriction that is eating less food fasting and reducing your intake of fast burning sugars and insulin spiking foods that's step number one step number two is nutritional supplementation that will strengthen your insulin make it more potent so you don't have to pump out as much so your pancreas isn't secreting as much insulin because it's stronger because the insulin it is secreting has more potency this is how the sweeties works this is how chromium vanadium works it potentizes insulin makes your insulin stronger so your body doesn't have to pump out as much your pancreas doesn't have to pump out as much get on the sweeties you want to do two or three of those capsules after every meal niacin vitamin b3 has the same kind of effect insulin potentizing effect niacin works hand in hand with chromium vanadium you'll get your niacin in the healthy start pack if you want some extra niacin go get a hundred milli go get a time to release niacin and do 100 milligrams of it a day between the healthy start pack the beyond tangy tangerine the sweeties and time to release niacin you're going to go a long way towards potentizing your insulin now hang tight because there's a couple more things i want to tell you about selenium magnesium and a couple other things so don't go away guy and uh if you're on hold hang on we'll get to you when we come back from our break i'm pharmacist ben you're listening to the bright side on the genesis communication network we'll be back right after this are back on the bright side. I'm pharmacist Ben. We're talking to Guy in Arizona about testosterone and diabetes. Uh, Guy, so reducing your intake of fast-burning foods, uh, fast-burning sugars, and insulin-spiking foods, that's your first step. Uh, you know the drill. Um, breads, pastas, potatoes, rice, fruit, juice, desserts, etc. Using nutrients to help stabilize blood sugar and protect uh, or potentize insulin, chromium and vanadium, that's your sweeties, and also... Uh, Zinc. Well, I forgot. I said one more thing. Oh, nice. And vitamin B3 and all the B vitamins work together. Vitamin C also has uh, blood sugar stabilizing benefits. Zinc will do double duty for you. Number one, zinc is very important for helping the body process sugar. Zinc deficiencies are also very common. So it's a good idea for you to get on 50 milligrams a day of zinc pick. Zinc picolinate, P I C O L. I-N-A-T-E. Zinc's also important for testosterone production. Uh, zinc is a male hormone or anabolic or building mineral. We'll talk about zinc next week as it regards the skin. Uh, also, uh, testosterone, male hormone, is protective against diabetes, which means losing weight or at least losing body fat can be very helpful for you. Why? Well, female hormone is made in body fat, and female hormone will antagonize 
es uh, testosterone. It'll balance out or, or um, it'll reduce some of the effects of testosterone. So losing weight, dropping your estrogen will also help potentize insulin. Resistance training can help you. And all the caloric restriction strategies that we talked about earlier uh, before we went to break, that'll help you drop some pounds also. If you do some fasting, that will be uh, in your interest for a couple of reasons. Number one, it'll stabilize your sugar. Number two, it'll help you lose weight. And number three, it'll help you build muscle. Caloric restriction in combination with a resistance training is a great muscle building strategy. A couple more miscellaneous nutrients for helping stabilize blood sugar. In addition to magnesium and zinc, selenium is a very important mineral. You might want to try uh, 400 or so micrograms of the ultimate selenium every day. And then vitamin E and alpha lipoic acid are two really interesting nutrients that work hand in hand with selenium and with vitamin C for that matter. Uh, 400 milligrams a day of alpha lipoic acid can be helpful for stabilizing your blood sugar. And then 400 IU a day, 400 to 800 IU a day of the mixed to cover all form of vitamin E. So you got lots of wonderful strategies there, nutritional strategies, lifestyle strategies, dietary strategies, all of which should help you get over some get over your diabetes and and uh, potentize your insulin as well and also have beneficial effects on your male hormones. Is that good guy? Help you at all? That that does help me. I do a lot of this. I did have issues with uh, doing my cardio. Um, okay. I started out half an hour a day, went, went built up to an hour. That's a lot, guy. That, do you need that much? Well, I'm 70 pounds over my weight. So seven zero, you said? 70 pounds? 70 pounds. Okay, well, aerobic yeah. exercise, uh, you know, aerobic exercise is very important. Cardiovascular exercise uh, is super important, treadmills and bikes, but you don't, oh, shoot, I just let, I'm sorry, guy, I hung up on you by accident. Hopefully you're listening. Uh, but it's uh, overrated. Uh, as far as losing weight goes, yes, you can. You do need to exercise cardi. You do need cardiovascular aerobic exercise for sure, for sure. But that's not the end all and be all when it comes to losing weight. It's much more important that you pay attention to uh, to how, the kind of foods that you're eating. Also, if you're under stress, this is one of the hidden causes of weight gain and an inability to lose weight. Cortisol, stress hormone. When the body is under duress, whether it's physiologic duress or whether it's mental or emotional duress, it's not going to let you lose weight. So relaxation techniques and also uh, eliminating anything that's causing degenerative crisis in the body. That's also important for losing weight. And I apologize, Guy. I hung up on you by accident. Uh, so hopefully we, took, uh, we answered your questions. We took care of, uh, of your concerns. Thanks for calling, Guy from Arizona. Thanks for your kind words as well. Angel in Ohio, welcome to the Bright Side. What's up? Uh, yes. Uh, my grandmother, I'm in my mid-60s, and my grandmother uh, used a lot of herbs and things because we didn't have any... She didn't have any medication or anything like that. And she told us all that we should wash our faces in urine, in our urine. Hmm. And for, is that good for, for uh, uh, topical uh, skin problems? Well, you know, that's interesting, actually, that you mentioned that. I was going to blog about that next week, so I'm kind of curious that you brought it up. Urine contains something called urea, U-R-E-A. In fact, the, we get the word urine from the urea content of urine, and as it turns out, urea is actually one of the best moisturizers you could ever use for your skin. How do you like that? Urea also has uh, anti-aging properties. Now, I don't recommend that you use urine to get your urea, but you know what? Your grandmother was right on. It, well, if, urine if, is, if you if you have your vitamins and everything, and you eat, eat properly, then it would your vitamins would be in your urine. That would help, uh, right? All of that, all of that. You've got anabolic hormones in your urine, building hormones in your urine. You've got your own natural antiseptic and why antibiotic. Why would you recommend that then? Um, because. Uh, it's just sort of distasteful, maybe, you know, that's about it. Other than that, you know, people drink urine. There's a book called Your Own Perfect Medicine, which is all about urine therapy. There's really no health reason why you shouldn't do your own, you know, bathe in urine, wash in urine, drink your urine. Uh, it just is a little bit distasteful. That's the only reason I don't recommend it. It's not like I don't recommend it. Because, it's not like I'm saying don't do it. I just don't talk about it. You follow, Angel? I'm not saying I'm not recommending it, like, don't do it. I'm saying I just don't really talk about it or address it because it is... Oh, so there, there's well, nothing wrong with it then? No, nothing at all wrong with it. You know what? I remember seeing a picture of uh, in National Geographic when I was growing up of these kids in Africa. Uh, I think it was the Maasai tribe that lives in Kenya. And they, were, they had their head under this cow's... Uh, this cow was urinating on their heads, and, the, and these kids were washing their hair in the urine. And probably because of the urea content and some of the other benefits that are, some of the other health, uh, uh, healthy 
ingredients that are in urine, including, as you say, antibiotics and anabolic building hormones. But I just don't happen to mention urine. But your point is well taken. Yes, indeed. And I am going to blog about it here next week. Urine is a good source of urea, which is a natural skin moisturizer and anti-aging ingredient. But personally, uh, I would be getting some urea from, uh, you can get it on the internet, uh, urea, and you can put it in water and make your own toners with urea. U-R-E-A. Urea was actually the first chemical that was organically synthesized back in the 1830s. It was, uh, it, it was the first chemical that awokened us to the idea that we could create biological compounds in a laboratory, and it really revolutionized organic chemistry, and it's, it was the first molecule that let folks know that there was a uh, the pharmaceutical age had dawned on us and once you they figured out how to manufacture urea uh, synthetically how they figured out how to make it in the laboratory or in a factory setting it was a, a short jump into pharmacology and drug and the production and the advent of the drug industry uh, okay thanks angel appreciate your call hope we helped you out let's uh, move on to steve in virginia what's going on steve welcome to the bright side a question about vitamin C, and I was yes. listening to what you were saying uh, as far as topical use, but as far as internally, uh, what, what's a good form to take? I In, probably the internally, no. Nah, internally, ascorbic acid is just as good as any other form. There's a lot of folks talking about blended vitamin Cs with bioflavonoids in it and fruit powders and natural vitamin C. They're all good, but you know what? When, a, when the vitamin C, whatever form you're eating it in or getting it in, when it gets through your intestine and goes into your blood, and goes into the cells, it is going into the cells as something known as ascorbate, which is basically ascorbic acid. So it's not going into the cells with bioflavonoids or as a fruit and powder or vegetable powder. It's going into the cells, that's where it's doing its work, as ascorbic acid or uh, at more, more appropriately as ascorbate, which is a form of ascorbic acid. So it's plain old ascorbic acid. It's really cheap and you'll get great benefits. All of the literature that's been done on the clinical benefits and the therapy therapeutic benefits of vitamin C have been done on ascorbic acid or ascorbate. That, in my opinion, that's the best way to get your vitamin C. It's also the cheapest way. So I'd be saving my money if you're, if you're thinking about some fancy schmancy internal form of vitamin C. Ascorbic acid is pretty much the way you want to go. Now, topically, that's different. Topically, ascorbic acid is not the best form of vitamin C. You got to go with a fatty form, either ascorbyl palmitate or ascorbyl tetra iso palmitate. The tetra iso palmitate is crazy expensive. That's the kind I use in my truth treatment products. It's on the order of $800 a kilo as opposed to for ascorbic acid maybe $20 a kilo. So ascorbyl palmitate and ascorbyl tetra iso palmitate are the forms you want to look at, uh, look for if you're using vitamin C topically. Internally though, plain old ascorbic acid is just as good, in my opinion, is just as good as any other form. It's the cheapest form. It's the one most of the literature has been uh, most of the research has been done on in the literature and it's also the way cells utilize vitamin C vitamin C is utilized by cells as ascorbate slash ascorbic acid does that help you Steve yes uh, I did want to ask you about you know they you see these uh, in the health store these jars of um uh, bottles of uh, acerola when it says yeah. acerola. Acerola is a natural form of vitamin C and it's a great form of vitamin C. The problem with acerola is you don't get a lot of vitamin C in the acerola. You do get the cofactors and so it's not a bad way to get vitamin C. You're just not going to get the big doses that you need and in my experience you really do need to get gram doses and it's hard to get gram doses out of acerola. Thanks for your call Steve. Appreciate it and that's all the time we have for today. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll continue talking skin care and skin health next Next week, we'll talk about a very important mineral for helping heal the skin. And we're going to talk about a protein that's found in the skin that's associated with eczema and psoriasis and dry skin as well. We'll tell you how you can upregulate or stimulate the production of that protein. If you're interested in checking out my skincare products, it's truthtreatments.com. If you're interested in joining the Bright Side Ben team, call the phone team at 866-735-2470. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have yourselves a wonderful day. We'll talk to you all later.